We have videos talking about the ego and authentic self. I may get to some of that, may not, but I basically I want to use this concept here and what we're going to be looking at is simply this. The green letters of self here, that is going to be the authentic self. And this blue surrounding this is going to be your flesh, your natural, carnal, egoic flesh. That's your ego. That's your false self. In the Bible, that's called the flesh. It's called the natural man. It's called the carnal man. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 14 through, I mean, chapter 2, verse 14 is the natural man. And then in chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, it's carnal, okay? And even saved people. Even saved people referred to as the natural man and carnal, all right? Are ye not carnal and walk as men? So don't get this in this dichotomous way. Stop having this magical thinking associated with the point in time that you think you got regenerated. The transformation that needs to occur in you, the sanctification that pl takes place for you, it happens over time and it's gradual, Okay. So what, what we're going to have this look like, we're going to combine these two and put the authentic self inside the ego self. And most of our concepts of self is this blue outer shell. We have no idea what the authentic self is. And that comes as a matter of discovery, typically over many years. And over here on the right, I have an, I have an example. You're, you're, maybe you're a Calvinist, okay? That's part of your ego. It's not part of your authentic self. It's not the real you. Maybe you're a provisionist. That's part of your ego. It's not the real you. Uh, your sexual orientation. Okay. No matter how proud you are of it, no matter how uh, compliant or divergent it is with any tradition or whatever, that's part of your ego. It is not part of the authentic self. Uh, you're a Republican. You're a Democrat. It's part of your ego, not part of your authentic self. You're a Baptist. You're a Methodist. You're whatever. Um, that's part of your ego, not part of the authentic self. So what we're going to do is a little exercise, okay? <clears throat> we're going to take some concepts from the table of contents of Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology, second edition, and we're going to look at them through the lens of how you should relate to them, all right? And I apologize if you can't see this, but that's not really important so much. You'll get the idea of where we're going with this as we go. So up here, I'm going to put a word, having. Now let's take a concept, okay? Let's go through, let's go, the Word of God, the Word of God. That's a good concept. So we're going to say Scripture to make it shorter, okay? Scripture. Now, you have a connection to Scripture, don't you? And that connection, we're going to represent that by just a simple line, right? And we're going to make that line a little bit thicker in case you're having a tough time seeing it. Now, you have a question. You have, you have an option. Let's say you have, let, when I, let's, let's do it this way. Doctrine of Scripture. Let's put it that way. So, we're not actually talking about the Bible itself, we're actually talking about what you believe about the Bible. We believe the Bible consists of 66 books and was inspired by God through the mint in the original autographs, you know, anywhere from 3,000 to 2,000 years ago, blah, 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 all that stuff, all that stuff that you think you're supposed to believe. So let me ask you a question. What is your relationship to your doctrine of Scripture? Is it this? Is it attachment and having mode? Okay. And is it part of your identity? I am King James only. If you're not King James only, all the other ones are imposters and those people are going to hell and they have reprobate Bibles. Or, or, is your relationship one of awareness and possibility? I know what people say about the doctrines of the Bible. I know what all the possibilities are, but I'm not attached. I'm not identified with all those possibilities that I'm aware of with all those doctrines. Uh, I'm not in having mode with them. I don't feel like I have to have them. Where are you on there? Okay. Let's pick another one. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, oh, there's a good one. Uh, the Trinity. 
I might get people all kinds of crazy. Let's talk about the character of God. The character of God. And you have a doctrine of the character of God, okay? How, what, what's, what's your concept here? Okay? You have some kind of relationship to the concept of the character of God. And here's the question again. Are you in attachment and having mode? And by the way, when I say having mode, there are at least two modes of being. And one of them is having. And one of them is being. Okay. Now having takes place out here. It takes place as an extension of the ego. It is part of the ego. I do not put being up here with awareness and possibility. See, I could put being up here. Okay. But being does not take place out there. Being does not take place in how we relate to other things necessarily even though it extends toward that being if i put being being takes place in here with the authentic self it is something that you are it's not a way in which you extend toward other things you know, it, we, we could call these ego extensions okay cognition is extended you could say ego is extended what else do we have in here creation is a good one okay you got the character of God. You got, um, I could just take these three things over here. Say we could um, we could put creation in there. We could put uh, Trinity in there. We could put all three of those together. And then again, the question would be, how are you relating to those? Are you attached to these things? Do you have them in having mode? Are they part of your identity? If your opinion of these matters gets challenged, what does your body do? If your body gets upset, if you feel yourself getting into fight or flight mode, if you feel yourself getting defensive, if you feel yourself wanting to fight, wanting to argue, wanting to win, wanting to debate, I'll debate you in front of a thousand people and I'll destroy you. Okay, you're in your ego. That's having mode. That's attachment. It's identifying with the wrong thing. Okay? Or do you have a different kind of approach to these things? Awareness and possibility. Which is what I would recommend. Okay? Oh, what's another one? We could go to... Okay. Uh, send nature. There's one. Could do a sin nature one. Sin nature. Do you have do you have an opinion about that? Okay. Do you feel strongly about that? When your idea of the nature of man gets challenged, do you feel upset? Okay. Are you attached? Are you in attachment mode? Are you attached to this? Is are you ha do you have that doctrine? Like I have blue eyes, okay? I have a graying beard. I have amazing hands with great fingernails. I have these things. Okay, do you do you have doctrines that you feel strongly about? What's your relationship to these things? Now listen, you know what we're getting to, don't you? We had a guy on FSI last night say, when it comes to all these doctors, this is an older guy who's like been a preacher for many years and knows theology. He says, these are doctors, I'm getting to the point where I'm up in the air on these things. Like I'm not, I don't feel like I have to defend or, you know, align myself with these things. What about, ooh, here's a good one. What about the atonement? Okay. What's your connection to that? Are you in attachment mode and having mode? Do you get upset when people challenge what you think about the atonement? Do you feel like you have to defend things? 
What else do we have? We have covenants. We have uh, resurrection and the offenses of Christ. We have, okay, election and reprobation. There we go. Do you have opinions about uh, election and reprobation? Reprobation. That's what you get when you can't think or spell. What's your opinion of these things? Are you attached to them? Do you have them? Are you in your identity? Are you identified with these things? When somebody challenges your opinion of this, do you feel defensive? Do you feel upset? Do you feel like you need to argue or prove them wrong? Okay, if you do, that's part of your ego. Do you feel like you need to be a part of a church that feels a certain way about these kinds of things? It's part of your ego. It's not healthy. It's not who you are. It's not your authentic self. You're asleep. You're not awake. You're not conscious. Somebody says, uh, universalism and deniers of the existence of hell. Okay, we'll, we'll put the put your doctrine of hell up here. You got opinions about hell? You attach to those opinions? You think certain things? That's your ego. For or against, doesn't matter. If you're attached to it. If, um, if I'm in awareness and possibility space, I'm aware that there could be a little hell. And there's a possibility, and I'm aware that uh, maybe the people who say there isn't a, a literal hell, I'm aware of. I'm aware of those. There's a possibility space, and then there's maybe a confidence margin. And do I see people suspend judgment sometimes? Like I'm not going to make up my mind on this because I'm still searching it out. As if making up your mind on these issues is something that you need to do. What I'm telling you is that you don't have to have a position on these things. You don't have to have a position. You don't have to say, you don't have to defend the idea that there's a literal hell. You don't have to defend the idea that there's not a literal hell. Okay? Somebody said universalism. What is that? That's your soteriology. What is your soteriology? Okay? Do you feel defensive when somebody challenges this? Do you feel upset when people challenge this? Are you aware of the different possibilities? Okay, where are you on this? Okay, there and there. See, the thing, the thing isn't the truth of the matter of these things. That's not the issue. People need to know, like this guy in the comment section. Okay. It looks like his name is Dan Strait. How about universalism and deniers of the existence of hell? When you refer to somebody as deniers, it sounds like you're using that as a slur or an epithet, as if you're presuming there is the existence of hell, and these guys should be treated as second-class citizens because they don't, something like that. Okay. And so this person... Probably it, it sounds to me like they're against universalism and they're against denying the existence of hell. Okay, if they're against those things and they feel like they have to, you see, it's not about the position of those things. It's not about which one is right or which one is wrong. It's about your relationship to it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you are attached, if you are attached to your understanding of hell, and feel like you have to defend it, and you aren't in beginner's mind and first principles thinking on a recurring, normal, regener regenerative basis, then you have an ego attachment problem with this. Doesn't matter what the opinion is. Doesn't matter how strongly either way. It's not like, it's not like, so if there is a hell, and you are attached to that idea, and you must have it, that's part of your ego. If there isn't a hell, and you're attached to that idea, and you must have it, and defend it, and you feel upset when people negate it. It's part of your ego. That's something you need to let go. It is, it is not the correctness or incorrectness of the position. It is your relationality to the position. Understand me? That's the problem. That's what you have to let go of. You have to back off 
And so you, what you could do is you might take some of these lines and you might say this, like, I'm aware of a few different modalities of uh, soteriology. And as far as I'm concerned, I can, I'm going to make these lines dashed. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have to have a solid straight fixed exactly. This is, I've got it all semantically disambiguated and systematized. And I have the theory of everything on soteriology. I've got it all figured out. Because I promise you, if you are growing um, in 30 years, you will not see it the same as you do now. Presuming you're still alive. Um, if you are not growing, you may see it the same as you do right now, and that'll be sad for you and everyone around you.